I has my hat. And now I has my hat in time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Look at this box. The ET. The finest geeky garments and sundries. The ET.com. Looks like a freaking food parcel. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. And I had to pay charges again. Border charges. Why? Well, hi guys, welcome. Scaling here we are for another unboxing. And we're going to just jump straight on in a bit because... Yeah, finally got myself the uh, physical... Well, I say physical. The uh, Hat and Tom Collector's Box. So you get um, manual, the game as a download code on a N64 cartridge cutout, and a poster as well in an N64 looking box. So this is going to be pretty cool. It's just like, look at all this like, details and stuff in the box. It's ridiculous. I would like to keep the box, but they've stuck labels all over it, so I can't really keep keep the packaging box because it's Yeetie, and I haven't got Yeetie. So let's pop that open. Hang on, get the sides. There we are. D didn't want to open up there. Right. Get rid of those. Sorry if that was loud. It was right next to the microphone. And uh, oh, okay. We're doing it this way. Box. Another box. <laughs> really? Oh wait. Wait. Whoa, 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 what's that? Something fell. Something fell. That's my receipt. Fair enough. All right. So get rid of that because that's uh, everything else. So that's the main box right here. So oh, more sellotape. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bloody sellotape right there. Let's uh, pop. Still having trouble getting it out, but there's no more sellotape. What the hell? This is really. Oh dear. Oh, I'm not supposed to pull it that way. I'm supposed to do that. There we are. Is there even a box in it? Yes, there is. Wow. Okay. That, well, there's a lot of packaging here just to get the box. But it is literally an, an, an N64 like actual box. Look at that. I finally got one. <laughs> that looks so awesome! Oh my god, it even feels like an N64 box, as far as I'm aware. It even looks like it on the back, the yellow background with the red stripe. Even at the side here, it's got like uh, one to two players simultaneously, so they're still preparing for the uh, multiplayer thing. Which, by the way, 20th of August, this video will actually probably come out either today or later on. A free, a hashtag free game video will have to come out probably later. So, and Let's Play videos are still going to be a little bit ahead, so that's a thing. But we'll be able to talk about that at some point once we hit past uh, August 20th. Because it could be DLC for the game. But yeah, so we've got the box here. It's, uh, oh that's cool. That's some artwork you don't normally see. Maybe if I turn that on, it might be a bit better so you can actually see in the light. There we are, that's a lot better. At time. So yeah. 3D platformers are back. Travel with Hackers, she discover, tries to recover the hourglass sheep fuel on her spaceship. Race to collect them all, as everyone else beyond the planet will be hunting for them as well, including the evil little moustache girl. I wouldn't say she's evil, she's just misguided or has too many ideas. Upgrade your hat by attaching badges to it and defeating everyone in your way with your trusty umbrella. And then you get like a little, uh, thing with the little, uh, pilot hat there. But focus. There we go, focus. <laughs> oh, wait, what does it say there? Hat in time limited edition box set. That's pretty cool. So yeah, it's uh... Actually, I just realised the background image for the back of the box is actually the... is slightly different to what was actually used for the loading screen of Mafia Town. The hat kid looks a little bit different. Oh, and you got like Moustache Girl there just flipping the uh, timepiece. That's pretty sweet. I actually like that artwork. It's like really good. The shading. So let's actually get into this box. So obviously there's not much in here. Oh, oh boy, okay. So let's get all that out first, if I'll be a little bit careful. This is the main reason why I wanted this, for a physical instruction manual. I love instruction manuals, you don't even know, you get a, some official artwork that you don't normally see unless you go online, and that's not the same, and you get some like little jokes and stuff that you won't normally see otherwise, probably some beta images for printing purposes and stuff like that, and it's full sized, and it's actually laid out like once again, like an N64 kind of instruction manual. In the first episode, I, as well as in the playlist, I put a link to the PDF that's online, so it's literally just an N64, uh, an N64 kind of um, instruction manual. In fact, I'm going to get Super Mario 64 out. Give me a minute. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, couldn't find my Super Mario 64 box. I never moved in there, so I don't know where it's gone. But hey, go and have a collect on Badger Kazooie. And if I flip, there we are. It's got the red stripe. I don't actually think Mario has the red stripe. But yeah, so if we compare, yeah, see. They, they look, they do feel like similar boxes. 
obviously uh, Banjo Kazooie feels heavier, but if I just do that, so you got the red stripe and everything, I don't think it's the same thickness though, now that I think about it. Oh no, 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 it is the same thickness. So yeah, if I pop in a Banjo Kazooie real quick, we can have a little look at the manual. Whoever it may be. no manual god damn it man this is a train wreck already but you know what it looks similar okay take my word for it just have a look at any bloody scans online and you'll see it I'll probably slap the Mario 64 manual up on screen just to see and now I'm having trouble getting this all back in my box ah! <sighs> well that was messy as all hell so let's continue having a look at the actual manual here so what's uh, let's go to page six which is the story so yeah there's no actual story it's literally just illustrations and it looks absolutely amazing it's like a comic strip and it's literally just showing like frame for frame all the major parts of the of the intro that you play through she wakes up, lands right on her face, all days, gets a notification, checks her progress, Mafia turns up, <laughs> that kid's like, nope, don't want what you're selling, punches through the thing and gets blasted into space, losing all her fuel. So yeah, it's funnily enough, it's the Mafia's fault, so. And then you get like all the uh, character bios and stuff, full art and a couple of screenshots, including Cooking Cat, <laughs> the tourist. Oh, and uh, yeah, the manual actually says that, that the spoilers for the Let's Play, but it actually tells you the names of a few characters. Um, co considering where I'm up to right now, we're part 9, we don't actually know the name of this guy. And I don't think it's actually said, but since it's in the uh, in the manual, we'll probably start in episode 10, I'll make mention of that, and I'll actually mention the Snatcher, because then it's easier than saying, big, spooky purple dude. So, <laughs> you know... Yeah, because he's all like ink and whatnot. Lurks in the shadows, obsessed with making sign contracts. Makes me making me sign contracts. That's a thing as well. Notice what it says here. Lurks in the shadows. He's obsessed with making me sign contracts. So it's so it's like the whole manual is more just like a little diary that Hat Kid has written of her adventures. It's kind of crazy. I mean, if I go back to her own bio, if I if I just do this. I'm a time traveling explorer. No area is too dangerous for me and my umbrella. My mission is to. Find all the timepieces so I can go home. Wish it was that easy. This is a moustache girl who, who seems friendly on the outside, but don't let the facial hair fool you. She's after my timepieces and I can't let her get away with them. Yeah, so it, it's adorable in how like it's actually written in the first person for the most part. I mean, like on the first uh, on the first page, it's actually written by the mafia. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, let's just read it in his voice. This official seal is to guarantee that Mafia has reviewed video game and has met glorious standards in highlighting efficiency, workmanship and good-hearted nature of Mafia. Mafia's seal does not condone actions of annoying little girl, only that Mafia is the best. Always look for this seal to ensure Mafia quality. <laughs> and yet that's actually not on the box, so the box itself is not Mafia quality apparently. So it must have been Hat Kid's craftsmanship. Who knows? Look at that image, it's adorable. And it pretty much says that on PC you can pretty much use like all kinds of controllers. Including GameCube controller if you have the Wii, if they have the PC controller adapter. Also bongos if you really want to be that mad. <laughs> uh, hang on a minute, Wait, I thought it was actually like a bongo joke around here somewhere. Ah, here they are, here it is, it's like the first paragraph, so let's get that into focus. Focus. Camera please, thank you. Ever since I arrived on this planet, I've noticed people playing video games in so many ways. They even use bongo drums. Must be a human thing. <laughs> I wonder how you would actually be able to play this game with the bongos. You 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 would not be able to. I mean, the only reason why Donkey Kong Jungle Beat worked is because it was a 2D plane and it was built specifically for them. Some other games you could probably do, but yeah, it's it's kind of weird. <laughs> so yeah, interesting. You'll have to do a lot of button mapping because technically both sides of the bongos have two buttons each, but. That don't really matter because you just whack them anyway and that's your whole palm so because you can tap the like the edge which is one button because it's got like that line 
So, and of course, PS4 and Xbox uh, controller. Well, I think that's an Xbox 360 controller. It looks like it. Yeah, because it's got the back thing. So it's a PS4 and Xbox 360 controller, uh, being the presets. But of course, Xbox One, PS3 controllers, any generic gamepad through Steam and map the buttons, and now Switch controllers are compatible as well. But buttons are always shown as such. So um, obviously, using a Switch controller, it pops up as um, Xbox controller. So. Oh, no, no, this, this is what I wanted to compare it to. In fact, I, I'll put it over here, and then I'll overlay the uh, Mario uh, 64 spread. Yeah, it's literally one for one when it comes to, like, showing the moves, because Mario's been put in poses, and so's Hat Kid, and it's, it's amazing. Don't know about the lighting when she's crawling on the floor, though. It lo her face looks a little bit odd, but it's adorable all, all the same. It, it, all of this, I believe, is, like, illustrated by uh, Jenna Brown Scientar, so really good. So I think uh, we've got the badges here actually as well as the hats which by the way I want to say that with the PDF online is pretty much um, like the basis that I use to create my um, counters for picking up everything. Um, they weren't ripped they were like recreated using other like um, using shapes and stuff. The only things I did really borrow from uh, this for the counters were mostly like these but of course, it's not the same rips because uh, I had to resize them and relay them out. I mean, look at the yarn. None of them are the yarn like th th that's used in the collection tallies. Um, I was tempted to have like multiple different graphics having just the yarn, but I might as well just say what yarn it is because it goes into a collective total. It'll be a lot easier that way, and it also matches with the actual total that is displayed in the game's pause menu. So. And relics, well, that's a thing. That's something I had to really get creative with because re relics are showing up as presents. And yeah, that's just a silhouette. I could have made silhouettes for every single one, but that would just be awkward because then you could get them in any order. So as a general collection kind of like graphic, find a pr nice present graphic, double it up, make that smaller, give it the outline, give the other one a bigger, make, give that a white outline. And it was, it was quite hard to make. And of course you've got dies, time rifts, and it also says with custom stages for for mods and stuff, because obviously you get a P PC download code here, which I might give away. So keep an eye on Patreon or the Discord for that. Links are in the description below. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for more of us at Gears for Breakfast, thanks for playing. So yeah, that's the manual right there. So what else have we got? We've got like this thing. I think this is my poster, which I did say during episode 5 that the loading screen, yep, the loading screen is actually the poster. <laughs> I might put that here or something. I'm not too sure because, like, if I just rotate the camera just a tad here, there's my uh, Ocarina of Time poster that I got with Ocarina of Time 3D. So that's cool. So there's the poster, and uh, yeah, there's not actually anything else in the box. It's just the it's just that the poster, and then the game itself, which is on an N64 car. <laughs> you know what? I think we need to try that out. Okay, it's not. It's just literally a cardboard cutout. That's how thin it is. And I'm not flipping it on the opposite side because of the of the download code. But yeah, but it's literally... In fact, they've printed on the game bit screws as well. I mean, obviously that's to make it complete with the N64 box, the way that the manual's laid out and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, by the way, <laughs> first N64 game that has online play, am I right? Actually, no. That is not true. Some cartridges actually had a LAN adapter, that, a LAN slot that you could just plug it in directly into the on, online. But that's another time. Nintendo covered that up or something because I remember watching it. I'm just readjusting the camera. But yeah, that <laughs> it's just a cardboard car with a download code. So I'll probably be giving out that download code. I'll probably scan it in so you can print it out and have it yourself physically. But yeah, it's a little bit annoying that there's not actually a physical version. I probably would have preferred like maybe a similar to what the uh, the, the Freedom Planet Collector's Edition uh, did. Like you have like that USB. Yeah, like this thing. You just like do that and there's the USB it's, it's literally a card but that is still technically a physical version for PC if they didn't want to put it on a disc because 
mods and stuff. The the uh, are you like having this like say let's do a little quick mock up here. Just a just a little bit of a suggestion, you know. So that pops out like that, yeah. So let's say we 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 take that, just pop it behind here like that. Um, maybe make it a bit like contacts or something, and then you just push that down, and then you can just stick that in your computer. And yeah, that would be like a physical version, and you would still have the N64 gimmick. Or you know, you could have just make it easy and just have it come out out the side. That would be a little bit more weirder, but. It would have been a way on doing it, and it's like I'm not. Obviously, you would have to pay to have that, and they the box is cheap, and they stick a few extra bonuses in there. But truthfully, the reason why you would pick up the collector's edition is really for the box, so it can sit on a shelf or win your collection, get a nice poster as a bonus, and the manual physically because the manual is so awesome. But with that, it's basically I might be giving this code away, or so keep like I said, keep an eye on Patreon and Discord for that. But yeah, that is pretty much the to win it. It's just literally the poster, the manual, and uh, the, the game itself as a download code. Download and play on Steam, that's all I can say from the back. And it just like goes in nice and neatly in a nice little collector's box. And yeah, for um, not counting uh, postage, it was about $30, which is about £23, I believe, for this whole little box. And that's the reason why I picked it up. I kind of like caved and got it because it was like so cheap. But bloody border checks and you don't get told until it's supposed to be delivered so you get a slip instead and then I had to pay out an extra £12 and I'm like why didn't do it with the Undertale figures but you'll do it with this so yeah spoilers for the Undertale figures excuse me but that's for um, another time so yeah a little bit of a hint drop there but I still wanted to make sure about that because that video will pretty much be coming out on the third anniversary of, Und uh, of Undertale's release because that's a little bit of a thank you video for the uh, voice actors that have been doing it. But that is the collector's box for I do a little mini unboxing. Maybe this will go alongside um, a hashtag free game or something. I'm not too sure because it is not as long. But that is obviously a decision for later. Plus we've got more time to cover Hat in Time now. So because mainly because the Spyro Reignited trilogy has been pushed back by two months from September. Um, 21st, which is the 20th anniversary of Spyro, to November 15th, I think, of November 13th, that's it, November 13th. So it's been pushed back by two months, so we've actually got more time to cover this, and that means we can go back to South Park Fracture by Hole for the DLC. So I thought I would squeeze that in here, just letting you know, since I'm on camera and it's in my brain space because this is our current project. But yeah, that's the Collector's Edition, I hope you enjoyed this little unboxing, I know I was a little bit scatterbrained all over the place with uh, explanations and showing it off and stuff. But yeah, with that guys, I'll see you guys next time. Has my hat!